Hello and welcome to this edition of Tips and Tricks. Now today I'm going to be telling you kind of how I go about breaking down a new lake that I'm going to go to when I'm shore fishing. Now I've done, I, you've, this is kind of my process. You've seen a lot of my videos. I've ventured new lake, ventured new lake, ventured new lake. And a lot of these lakes, you know, it's been a couple years I've been fishing them, but I already found some good spots. And I, you know, and I catch some good fish there. But how I do it and how I go about it is first, obviously, I go into Google and I go into the satellite and I look at the lake. Now this is basically just for demonstration purposes here. This this computer is my editing computer. It's offline. But I do have a picture I took of uh, Coyote Lake just so I can kind of give you a run through of what I do and what I look for uh, when I'm scoping out a new lake to go to, to fish from shore. First off, obviously I look to see uh, what kind of access it has. Oh, and another thing. I'm talking about like public lakes, not not private lakes or private ponds or things that are on private property you're trying to sneak into. I'm talking about breaking down from shore a new lake you're going to. That is actually a public lake. So back to this. First thing I do is I'm on there and I might go in. I said demonstration purposes. This will get really pixelated if I go in close. But when you're on Google, you can go in pretty close. It's nice and clear. But I will run, you know, up and down it and try to look for, you know, where the road is how close the road is to the shore what what you know what the shore actually looks like how maybe how steep it is or how the trail is uh because i don't you know i don't want to be like putting myself in danger and going down like <laughs> vertical uh cliffs and things you would need a rope to go so and you know i'm getting older too I'm looking for some for for access points first and seeing you know where how that road runs along it. Obviously, when I first went to Coyote, I'm like, all right, well, evidently this whole side of lake I can't fish <laughs> because the road's on this side. So then I started looking at okay, well, where on that road is the spot where there's you know turnouts, and then I advanced to actually going in and looking at the lake itself and looking for, okay, well, there's, you know, I go in kind of close first, kind of take, okay, well, yeah, all right, there's a, okay, there's a little cove there, and, um, yeah, okay, it looks like, you know, it looks like there's a kind of a point there. And then the next thing I look for is if it's deep or shallow in that area. Because a lot of times when you're on Google and you're on a satellite, when you're out, depending on how the photo is taken, you can see through the water. So you can tell where it's going to be shallow, where it's going to be deep. Because you might see a place and be like, oh my God, that spot, it looks so good. No, look at that long point that goes out. And then the satellite, you notice, oh, well, it looks like it's only, you know, two or three deep feet deep around it. Or <laughs> So you're like, eh, it looks good. And, and what I'm telling you too is a lot of times when you find it there, on here, when you're looking through it and you get there, it's like, Oh, okay, that, that spot looks so good from the satellite, but once you get there and you look at it and you're like, oh, yeah, it's all weeded up or it's just water's lower than it was on the Google image and you're just like, oh. But okay, so I go through and I find some spots. I find, you know, I find a little spot that looks good, looks like it's a point or it looks like it's a little curve or it looks like it's a little cove. Then I will go in like super, super close, like I said. When I go on this one, it's just demonstration. It's just going to be pixelated like that. But I will go in really, really close, like as far as you can. And I will go over that whole area like inch by inch and just start looking if I find a certain area I want to fish. And I'll start. And what I'm looking for is, is it rock? Is it sand? I'm looking for sort of transition differences in rock, like going from rock to going to sand or going from sand to chunky rock. Because those transition places are always a place that fish like to hang out, where a transition bottom. And also, I'll start looking at, you know, what what kind of leads into this spot. Like if it's a little bit of a nook in that, it's like, does it have a look like it has like a creek when it's raining that it actually flows in a lot, or or does it have a pipe running into it or something? Because that could, you know, tell me that okay, we're right there. Well, it looks kind of good. The shore is kind of 
sandy and all that, so maybe there's like underneath there's some sort of gully or you know something dug out from when the water's low and it fills up and it's running down it. If it's creating a gully or, or cutting into it, so there might be a good little drop there. And so that that's sort of the how I go about first sort of giving getting my head around the layout of the lake, you know where the access is, and kind of a rough idea of what it looks like and give myself some spots to start with. But of course, then when you get down to the water, you start looking at, you know, the water color. You look to see if there's any, you know, weed growth, any sort of plants. Um, obviously, you look for fish activity, the wind direction, that sort of stuff. That's another thing, too, when I go to these places. Before I actually go, I always look at the wind direction <laughs> to make sure that and the wind speed in that to make sure that I'm going on a day and suddenly I'm in a spot where it's just howling into it or it's blowing past it really bad. So yeah, that's another thing too when I do try to break down a new lake for myself. When I actually set the date to go, I'm looking at the weather and, and the wind and the wind direction. So I can kind of tell where I might be able to hide or hide out or anything. But yeah, so then, then once I get there, I start looking at, okay, well, oh, it's wow, this lake's pretty darn clear, or, oh, this lake's kind of mucky, or, or, oh, wow, that's a lot of hydrilla I see, or, oh, I didn't, wow, I, there's a lot of this weed here. And then that sort of leads you to, you know, how you're going to start the day and how you're going to start fishing it. But I always, you know, usually start out with the finesse stuff and the slow stuff, just because it's a brand new lake, it's a high percentage bait. Usually you've already picked out a spot or a research spots that look like they're a high percentage place. So I'll break it down that way and then I'll go from there and maybe explore with, you know, something faster like a bladed jig or an active bait or a super slew or something. But that's just right. I've had a lot of people asking me. That's kind of why I'm doing this tips and tricks because I had a lot of my viewers saying, you know, could you tell us how you go about breaking down a, a new lake? And I've usually, I think I only fished new lakes from shore, mostly all the ones you've seen me do are from shore. So. This is basically my process. Yeah, you start with Google, you look for access first off, figure out, you know, because most of the lakes around here and a lot of the lakes, they're one sided. You have access to one side or one little area from shore and the rest of it you can't get to. So that's the first thing is to go, oh, okay, look, I can't fish the east side of it. I can fish only fish the west side of it. So where am I going to fish on that side from shore? Where you get another, you might, oh, I can get to the west side of it, but I can't get to the east side of it, or I can get to the east side, but not the west. So, but yeah, break it down from that. Look at, you know, obvious spots, but then go in close. Just zoom like, I said, this won't zoom all the way. But zoom in and just go over inch by inch and look at if it's rocky, if it's sandy, transitions, if there's wood, if there's something identifiable. And then the depth, because I said, usually you can kind of tell if it's shallow through the, the Google satellite image. You can see, you'll be able to see the bottom through the water and be like, Ah, oh, look at that blade, look at that long one. And you get there and it's all just really shallow right now. And, oh, and when you do it, kind of look for transition-y spots in one spot. Like, look for a spot that might be deep water on one side and then sh maybe shallow water on the other side if it's like a point. Or you can tell there's kind of a steep wall where it's deep, but you just go a little bit away as it looks like it flattens out and there's kind of a flat where it's, it's shallow. So you have two different, you have a deep and a shallow, so you have different um, options in one single spot instead of having, you know, oh, this spot looks good, it looks like a really shallow spot. And then you go there and you're like, ah, oh, no, it doesn't. And once you get here, it doesn't. So then you get in your car and you drive all the way to the next spot and you're like, oh, here's a deep spot. Let me check the deep spot. And you're like, oh, no. So from shore and, and to sort of condense it down more, try to look for places where you have multiple situations you can fish within a fairly close area. So you can fish different styles and different waters, but not have to hike back up, get in the car and drive, and then go to the next spot and then drive. So that's kind of the way I break down a new lake when I go and fish it from shore. So I hope this helps. <laughs> I said people have been asking for this, so this is kind of my process. But uh, I said I hope it helps. Until next time.